Brothers and sisters, let me tell you, this is how valuable you are. I think the universe would hide you in its pockets so that you would never be scratched and never receive a dean or a dent. I'm preaching you just like I would have in the old days, just minus a few characters in the story. There's no mention of God or Jesus. Can I get a Darwin? Prepare yourself for a journey. A journey of discovery. The book has been written. The speeches have been done. And now it is time to go between the pages with Jerry DeWitt and Bobby C. Today's date is September 8th, 2016. My name is Bobby C. And once again, I am joined by my amazing co-host, the one and the only, Mr. Jerry D. Hello, Bobby C. Hello, Mr. Jerry D. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. And every time I hear amazing co-host, it makes me feel a little better about myself. Well, there you go. See, that, that's what this is all about. I, I just want to make sure that you, you feel good about yourself and just, you know, that everybody loves Jerry D. Well, if you call me amazing, then I must really be something. <laughs> because that's, that's either that or that's, that's not much of a compliment coming from no, me. I no, don't know. No, no, it's 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 like it's like the Sears Tower, you know, saying to another building, "Dang, you're tall," you know. So, uh, so I appreciate it very much. No, also man. makes me think of the Amazing Spider Man. So that's a good thing as well. See, there you go. It's just good all the way around. Good all the way around. You be doing okay. I have been doing okay. I've been traveling a lot, been busy. I'm tired, too old for the silliness that I'm generally involved in. But, um, but, but by and large, yeah, I'm doing, doing good. And as always, always anxious to get back to this show and to our wonderful listeners. Always. Oh, oh yeah. I'm with you. It's, I, I look forward to Thursday nights. I do. I really, really do. I do. Well, guys, if you want to get your questions or comments on the air, you can live tweet during the show at Hope After Faith. Or you can join us in the chat room on Spreaker.com. I see Wendy, James, John, Trav. The chat room is starting to get going already. So it's good to see everybody in the chat room. Um, thanks for joining us once again for our live show. Our topic this week is forgiveness after faith. I got a feeling this is going to be a pretty deep um, conversation because... Forgiveness is normally just a Christian word, you know, it's a Christian aspect. You you read about it all throughout the Bible. Forgive them seven seven times seventy or whatever that scripture is. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of, it's always laid around religion, forgiveness has. And I I said a couple episodes ago when I was talking about the time when I forgave my biological father for everything. And I, and I said, how much better is forgiveness coming from an atheist who doesn't believe in God than forgiveness coming from a Christian whose goal is to um, gain favor with their far off sky daddy, you know? So I'm actually looking forward to getting into the digging deep the way we do here on hope after faith, getting naked and talking about this and diving down that rabbit hole, if you will, into what it means to have forgiveness after faith. So I got a feeling this is going to be a great episode. I'm excited about it. I, I come at it the same way that I come at all of these subjects, wanting to make sure that, um, you know, I can only speak for my own life, but obviously I'm always concerned about the Hope After Faith family as well. I'm always coming at it hoping that we are being motivated in the right way and right. that we're doing what we're doing for the right reasons, even if it's giving forgiveness sure. in situations. So I'm, I'm excited about it as well. Well, forgiveness is, is one of those things that when you say it around a non-believer, that they kind of look at you funny. Mm-hmm. You know, forgiveness, what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right. It's yeah. like, forgiveness? Really? You know, yeah. but it, well, I, th- I think what it comes down to is, or at least it was for me, it I had to do it for myself. Right. You know, because, folks, I guarantee you, there's not anyone anywhere lying in bed, losing sleep over the fact that someone hasn't forgiven them. 
Right. You know, that's not, I, are, are laying in their bed, um, losing sleep because they didn't ask forgiveness. I mean, it, it goes back from, from, from both sides. So yeah. the whole concept for me, as far as asking forgiveness or not hell, not even asking, but giving, giving forgiveness was done for me. And it, and you don't even have to tell the person that, that you forgive them. It could be something that could be done in, internally. Right. I'm, and, and that's what I'm most interested in is what is the mechanism of forgiveness? You know, is this something that truly is conscious, something that we can consciously do? Is it a choice that we're able to make? Um, are we, are we, and if we make that choice, are we really making the choice to feel different? Because I really question sometimes our ability to feel different. You know, so many times it seems to me that our, our feelings about any situation is a response to stimuli, whether that is, you know, an outside force or just a thought, versus whenever we say we forgive someone, are we actually making the choice just to behave differently? And is that the reason why that we tie forgiveness and forgetfulness together? You know, we'll say, oh, I'll forgive you, but I'll never forget. Right. You know, well, well, maybe the reason we think that we don't forget is because we know there's a part of us that's not going to ever stop feeling the way that we're feeling or that it may take time or that we don't have control over changing how we feel. So I find it a very, very complex subject as always, anything that I get a hold of, I, I could take a single sheet of paper and turn it into something complex, giving me enough time. Hmm. Now, John said in chat room, does forgiveness benefit the forgiver more than the forgiven? Yeah. You know, I, it, it, to me, it was something that I had to do just to release some of the... Um, Hatred, I guess, is is a word that I can use, um, or to get get rid of the excess baggage that I was carrying around, you know, with this grudge that I had been carrying, and right. I had to do it just for me, you know. I don't really g give a flip if if it helped him at all, right? You know, it right. was it was something that I had to do in order for me to move forward with. And, and I think, once again, I, this just reiterates the point that you made, that when an atheist says they forgive you, then uh, that probably is something to treasure even more than a religious person, primarily because, as we all know, um, in particular, Christian forgiveness is based off of scriptures, say, for instance, like Matthew uh, chapter 6, verse 14 through 15, it says, Jesus speaking, says, If you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Mm -hmm. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive you your sins. Now, I could, I could go back a couple of episodes with Hope After Faith, the podcast, and re-emphasize the point that I tried to make that Jesus taught under the law, and he, even right here, was emphasizing, uh, at least the way this story is written, what the law was supposed to really do for the heart of the, of the Jewish follower versus what it was doing and how watered down it had became by the time Jesus came on the scene. That's a total point altogether. But nevertheless, it seems to me that much of Christian forgiveness is based on this tit for tat, that if I don't forgive, then I don't get forgiven. And so it really is based off of, you know, once again, the benefit that I get from it. Now, you're, you're I think, promoting a much more um, uh, humane and reasonable form of, okay, if I forgive, these are the benefits that I get. But it's not that you're trying to be forgiven for some ill that you've done. Right. And, and, and that's a major difference. That's a, you know, yes, you're trying to get something out of giving forgiveness, but what you're not trying to get <laughs> is forgiveness for having done someone else wrong. Right. You know, you're not looking for forgiveness yourself. And so it's a, I, I, 
I find it a touchy subject primarily because of my personality. I, I bring this subject up, and I've brought it up several times in, in different secular circles, because I think people with my personality type are actually too quick to forgive. And I have forgiven or at least given a pass to people that I think ultimately truly did not deserve it and that I really, I didn't receive the type of benefit that you're talking about whenever I forgave them, but instead I actually felt it actually weakened my self-esteem. Hmm. I actually felt like less whenever I forgave them because, because in essence I was giving them a pass for something that I might should have continued to call them out on or, um, or quite honestly in some way punish them, even if it was nothing but, um, you know, no longer having a relationship with them or something like that. So, so I, I see, I can make it awfully complicated with given enough time. <laughs> well, that that's okay. We like complicated here on Hope After Faith. Yeah. Um, well, I I still gave that forgiveness, and I still have nothing to do with him. I want right. I, I want absolutely nothing to do with him. You know, right. um, I haven't heard from him. The guy lives 25 miles from me. I haven't seen him. I have no desire to see him. I don't even want to talk to the guy. Um, probably the only way I I will ever know if he died was if a family member texted me or something saying, hey, your dad died. Right. You know. Right. Um, but I understand, w w I understand where you're coming from, too. You know, was it do I really want to forgive them? Do it? Do I still think that they deserve some type of punishment or something like that? And you saying that you didn't receive the same benefit that I received. Um, my benefit, I think started long before I actually said the words. Sure. You know, it wasn't saying the words that did it. It was a buildup over a period of time. You know, to get to the point to where I can say, to where I could say the, those words, right? There was right. work that had to be done, sure, within me before I could actually muster the words "I forgive you." Yeah, it was, but it was after I said that that all of it fell away. But I, I don't, but folks, I don't, I don't want you to misunderstand. It wasn't saying the words; it was the work that went into building that forgiveness for years before right to make that right work. right yeah and 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 that's something completely different i think um i think you've probably struck a balance you had already drawn a line and i think this goes straight back to boundaries and 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 one of my one of my very severe critiques of christianity or at least the Christianity that I knew is that it does not teach and enforce healthy boundaries. And you, you created a boundary in your life between you and that person that allowed you to give forgiveness and receive the emotional internal benefit from doing so without crossing, allowing that person to cross that boundary and do more harm or, create more damage right and 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 i think that's because that's not what i did that's why it becomes a very serious question to me because i was taught the opposite of if you forgive then you try to forget because that's god's type of forgiveness mm -hmm. is is forgetting you know you cast your sins as far as the east is from the west right and are uh, you know cast into the sea of forgetfulness and and so if you truly forget then you have to act um, as if nothing ever happened which prohibits you from creating any type of boundaries and without boundaries it's very difficult to maintain any real level of self-respect you know you have to be able to say this far and no further and if anyone at all can catch that reference and understand why that's important today, please put it in the chat room 
and uh, and I will find some special way to reward you. I promise. <laughs> Once again, the reference is this far and no further um, on this special day. But you know, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, I slept through it. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's it, it's yeah. all right. It Apparently just it just shows. It it says more about me than it will about anyone who uh, who doesn't get it. I promise you. Yeah. So, um, I want you to know, Bobby. Before I forget to tell you, I'm having a hell of a great hair day. Are you? Oh man, man. I am up. Oh, Trev got it. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh well. See, that's why I don't know because I don't watch Star Trek. Yeah. That yeah. that's why I don't. Yeah. I don't know it. 50th anniversary today of Star Trek. And, um, oh, wow. And I know so in, in, in the first contact movie, Picard says this far and no further. And, and actually breaks, um, uh, breaks his trophy case that has all the models of starships in it. But, uh, anyway. Uh-huh. <laughs> I got it. Well, yeah. look, folks, I tried to watch Star Trek. I really did. I oh, tried. Bobby, don't tell me this. This is going to be so sad. I'm about to be very sad. Are you and I, I about tried. to break up? Are we about to, are we about All to right, accept Here boundaries? it is, folks. Episode 16 may be the final episode of Hope After Faith. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> the bromance. Is about the to be bromance up. is over, man. I, we, Jerry's going to break up with me after this. But no, <laughs> I tried very, very hard to watch Star Trek, and I just couldn't get into it. And Ashley and I both sat down and, and gave it an honest effort. Both of you to watch it, yes. And y'all have slept in my house. I know, but let me How tell you. But let happen? me tell you what it helped me have a great nap. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> what, what did you try to watch that bored you? It just I couldn't get into it. I tried, which, you know, because version? because which, being which? a look, I know being a part of this community, it kind of helps, you know, to know a little bit about Star Trek, so you can get the references. Like tonight, I didn't get the reference, <laughs> you know. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to learn this just so that I fit in better. Man, it didn't work. Well, which, didn't do work. you remember which series you were watching? I went all the way back to the original. Oh, well, there's your problem. Yeah. Well, see, and everybody says, well, you should have done that. You should start with Generation something, and then you should have started Generation this. Generation something. Yeah. Did y'all hear that? Did the world <laughs> just hear this man say that? Generation oh something, and then, and then, <laughs> so I try to go watch Generation something, and hell, it's confusing, too. Help me, Jesus. So, Jesus, Jesus, so, take the wheel. <laughs> Jesus, take the mic. So my thought was I can go back to the beginning and just start watching from the very beginning and then work my way th- through up Whoopi Goldberg and everybody else. Right. No, it, 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 it just didn't work. I know I wound up, I wound up watching, you know, 48 hours. Okay. So, <laughs> so here we are. I'm about so to I'm sorry to let everybody down. I apologize. I, I'm about to ask you something. And the answer to this is, is going to determine whether or not you're going to be excommunicated from the secular movement and have to go go renew your baptismal certificate or uh, not. Uh-oh, hang on. So, let, me, so, let me get the closing music ready. So, so <laughs> what about Doctor Who? Yeah, what about Doctor but Who? But you watch Doctor Who? You follow uh, Doctor Who? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay, okay. No, no, well, then there you go. Just really. like, and, yeah. and I caught up on Firefly. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. So, so that's good. So you're eclectic enough that you've got Firefly. You're, you're, uh, up to date enough that you've got Dr. Who. Right. Probably, probably the whole Star Trek, Star Wars thing. Love Star can, Wars. Can, can definitely, oh, well, see, there you go. So, so you're, you're forgiven. You're totally, you don't even have to be forgiven. Bobby, you are beautiful just as you are. Well, thank you, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> even Travis, Bobby has redeemed himself. <laughs> no guys I, honest to goodness i tried i really really did no. it's just you know it well just the, the reference is you know um god what's the quickest way for me to explain anyway um captain picard had uh had been as, assimilated into the borg and obviously had a whole lot of trauma left over from that and while he's battling them, 
there's a moment where he has to make a decision. He's being challenged to make a decision to surrender the ship, basically, you know, in order to try to, you know, save the greater mission. And so he's got a whole lot of this far and no further going on. You know, you know, we, 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 we let this pass. We let that pass. We let him go here. We let him go there. And, you know, we have to stop things. And I only reference that because I, 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 see more so now than ever that there is a real healthy balance found in boundaries. And, and that's me just going back and giving you kudos again and reestablishing the bromance that even though you forgave this man, you still maintained, um, a very, very high wall. Oh yes, a a very very high boundary, and so so I think that's important, and it's not always something. So so here, let me let me dig just a little bit deeper. Here, here here at least is my take on on the Christian experience. Um, There's a lot of people who, even though they're being taught to forgive and forget, um, that they may actually do what you have done. They may find a way to forgive an offense uh, against them, but yet they still put up a really tall wall, keep a boundary, and and that would be good. But unfortunately, because of how they were taught, how they are being taught, they actually probably feel guilty for doing what is ultimately the healthier thing to do because they're not following completely through, and they have this... They have this... um, you know this 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 image put in front of them continuously that Jesus forgave all the way to the point of allowing himself to be crucified to death right you know and that's a pretty high standard sure and and, and so if you were in in the christian world and in the christian mode as i appreciate it you would probably feel somewhat guilty even though you were receiving some benefits for forgiving this person, you would probably still feel somewhat guilty for not meeting this higher standard of, you know, going and cutting his grass and calling him every day to make sure he's okay and, you know, yeah, oh, hell no. and, and, and sacrificing yourself for that person. Well, let me ask you something, Jerry. Sure. Can a person really forget? I mean, really? Absolutely not. No, I, I don't. I don't know how we ever even got got it in our minds. Um, I mean, I, I don't think a person can choose to forget. You know, I, I don't think that mechanism exists. I, I think maybe you, you, you can, uh, through just natural processes, forget things, you know, and, and maybe even pretty severe things, you know. Um, but I don't think you can choose to. Yeah, because people, you know, forgive and forget. Okay, yeah. that sounds real nice on 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 postcards. Yeah, right, right. You you can forgive, but I don't know how you forget horrible horrible things. Yeah, yeah. I I, I don't I don't think you can. I mean, if if we're going to be if we're just going to be nuts and bolts about it, um, you know, there's an evolutionary reason why you don't forget things there's a reason a a very beneficial reason why you remember things you know and it literally gets burned into your into your brain of what was done to you and how it was done in order to protect you Mm -hmm. and so you know how you reverse that mechanism consciously i don't know if you can John asked in the chat room, if you can't let a person back into your life, have you truly forgiven them? Yeah. <clears throat> I would say yes. And, right. And I agree wholeheartedly with what Trav put in there. I don't want to play psychologist, John, but maybe so. Maybe if you forgive give someone, but still not let that someone back in your life, you're just, choos- you're just closing a, a chapter in your life. Saying, mm-hmm. okay, that part of my life is over. Now let's move on. Um, you you can you can forgive and not allow that person back into your life. Um, just because you forgive doesn't mean that you're gonna that you're automatically gonna go back to lo- lubby dubby, you know, father son thing. Yeah. Because 
even though you forgave the memory of the hurt is still there. Yes. And, and I think we need to, I, I, I think because so much of the psychology of religion is, is literally first century understanding, you know, or at least some derivative of first century understanding. It takes, it, it lacks the insight that we now have and the discernment, there's your good Bible word, that we now have determining the difference between actions and feelings and, you know, the different parts of, of the human psychological experience. Because it's one thing to behave in a way that from the outside, a third person, a third party person would say, oh, well, that person has forgiven that other person. And, uh, and, and, and they look so forgiving, they look from the outside as if maybe they've even forgotten that it happened. But just because you're behaving that way, acting that way, doesn't mean that you're not still feeling the hurt, uh, you know, uh, the damage on the inside. Because, you, you know, you could very easily be making a conscious effort. And because we play these things off due to our religious experiences, it's not surprising when that junk resurfaces, Sure, you know, la yeah. later on. You know, you go weeks, if not, you know, or months uh, without bringing a topic up, and then all of a sudden the right thing triggers it, and there you are. And it's all still very real and very fresh um, because I don't know if you really have the ability to help feeling what you feel. No, I, well, I, I, I agree. And look, j just because you forgive a toxic person, right, doesn't mean that you put yourself back into a situation to where you can be hurt again. Right, boundaries. Right? Yeah, there's, just because I forgive you doesn't mean that all of a sudden we're good again because then I'm opening myself up to even more in the future. Right. There's nothing wrong with recognizing going, hey, this is a habitual thing for this person, and I choose not to be around them. Right. I, I can forgive them, but I can choose to not be around them, choose to stay away from them, recognize what's going on, recognize their behavior, and then recognize the fact that, hey, I want nothing to do with that. Right. And, That's still, right. and still go, hey, I forgive you for everything you done for, that, 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 that you did to me. I forgive you for that. And then I'm done. I'm walking away right. and I'm going to leave everything behind and I'm going to move forward and I'm going to work toward another aspect of my life. Right. There's nothing wrong right. with that. No, there, there's definitely nothing wrong with that. And, you know, I, I will give credit where credit's due. Brother Lewis Robertson at Six Mile United Pentecostal Church, I remember him. He was one of the first ministers that I ever heard express something somewhat similar in saying that you don't have to be best friends with everyone in the church. No. You know, and now he had to stretch it a little bit further and say, you know, you don't even have to like everybody that you love, you know, uh, and, and that's a little bit of a play on words, and it kind of diminishes, at least for me, the definition of love uh, and what that actually means, you know, and how you actually play that out. But I do think that... Um, that even he, he he just happened unfortunately to be in a be in an environment where what he was saying was somewhat contradictory to the doctrine that everyone at least assumed he should be promoting. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Because you can very easily love someone and not like them. <laughs> yeah. How does that work? <laughs> because I think there are parents all over this world. <laughs> that, that yeah. understand that you love your children, but you may not like some of the things they're doing. Right, 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 not, right. Now, not saying that you don't like your children, but you don't like their actions, or you have friends that you love your friends, but you don't like the way they're doing something, or you don't like the way they're acting. What it comes down to is can you love them through it? And if not, it's, it's time to separate. Right. That and I, I think that's a very, very important except you can't do that with kids. Yeah, you can't do that with kids. But, but <laughs> here, we, here we go back to, you know, uh I think something that's very important 
to distinguish, and that is the difference between feelings and actions, the difference between um, you know having affection, um, but yet still having boundaries and preferences. I, I, I contend what I contend on almost every episode, one of the greatest disservices that religion does to humanity is it tries to simplify the complex. And in so doing, I think it um, belittles the human experience. Because yeah, the so human too. experience, if nothing else, it has to be... It, it I, I don't think I'm overstating it when I say the human experience is by far the most complicated experience or process in the universe. I can agree with that. You know, what else could there be that could be have more moving parts than than the human experience? Sure. And but religion tries to minimize it and, and whitewash it and make it either plan A or plan B or, you know, here's your three steps. Um and and if I was going to be fair you know, everyone who listens to the show knows I love self-help, and and in some ways, self-help kind of, kind of does that as well sometimes. Sure. Um, and 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 we're drawn towards that because we do want simple answers. We do want to think that we can have control, more control than what we may actually be able to have. But it does come down to, yes, I can love that person on one level and totally not like them on another level. Sure, I completely agree. Yeah, I completely agree. And 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 so so there again, that just supports your earlier statement that you can forgive this person, but at the same time, set up a standard and a boundary and a wall of defense that absolutely protects you from them. Yes, and there's absolutely nothing. There's absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. Um, right. Because what it comes down to is you have to protect yourself. Exactly. Especially if you know that there's a history. Yes, that that's right. That that's exactly right. And 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 it's probably fair to say that uh when you look back over that history without something incredibly, incredibly brain altering happening, um that person's behavior probably isn't going to change that much. No. Yeah. No, I, not I, for I, past I, experience. I, I really think that in so many ways we are who we are, and we wake up in the morning and we, you know, we make uh, the choices that we make, oftentimes thinking it is the best choice, only to look back later on in life and see a pattern <laughs> of bad yeah. choices. Right. <laughs> You know, um, but we didn't know they were bad when we made them. We, you know, we just, we made it with the brain that we've got. I, I, I feel like if we really gave ourselves a little bit of a break and looked at our brains as computers and just said, well, you know, we did that calculus with the computer we had. And unfortunately it was outdated and had some faulty software and, you know, and there's no real reason to assume that it could have given us a better answer than what it did. Right. You know, that makes it easier for us to forgive ourselves. I've always said, I've said for years and years and years, even while in the ministry, I said, the you of today has no right to judge the you of yesterday. Mm -hmm. Because you were doing the best you could then, the same way you're doing the best you can today. And that's probably... Um, the foundation of being able to forgive other people as well is to look at the faultiness of their software and their hardware. Yeah. No, cause it's, it's, uh, and I think we talked about that last week was looking at the person that we were then compared to who we are now. Right. You know, you, you're not the same person. Not only mentally are you not the same person physically, you're not the same person. That's right. You know, that, that, and right. so what it, what it comes down to is recognizing what's going on now. Cause trust me, high sight is truly 2020. Sure. You know, if, if we could know that if we could go back then with the knowledge we have now, it would change everything. Absolutely. But, but we were dealing with what we had at the moment to deal with and either we made some right 
right decisions or he made some wrong decisions. Man, I tell you, I've made my share of wrong decisions. But looking I, back now, I'm glad I did because I learned from them. I am sure. who I am today because of the bad decisions I made in the past. I agree with that. And, and, and I think the beginning of forgiveness after faith is to forgive ourselves. I think that really is the beginning of, of all other forgiveness because it, 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 it I, I definitely don't mean to sound too preachy and I'm kind of slowing down and checking myself as I go because I don't want to say this from, you know, any residual religious of, effects, but it really is difficult to love your neighbor as yourself if you don't love yourself. That's true. <laughs> you know, that's true. and that's, and, that's, very and so true. that's something I preach for the last five years is yes, love your neighbor as yourself, but love yourself first, or you're going to really suck at loving your neighbor, you know, if you don't. And I think the same thing is true with forgiveness. If you don't have self forgiveness, then how do you, from what's the foundation, you know, from which you move and set up boundaries and forgive other people. And I've encountered many Hope After Faith people that still struggle not just with a sense of regret over time lost, but really a little bit of um, hatred would be too too big of a word. I'm, you know, just water it down enough that it makes sense. But a little bit of self-hatred, self-disrespect, over having been bamboozled in the first place and spent so many years working their way out of it. And, and of course, it still ties back in with a sense of regret that there's time there that's been lost that you can't get back. Right. But I think that's an important place to start the forgiveness process. Well, I think the self-forgiveness was what I was going through, you know, years building up to the point where I could say, I forgive you. You right. know, that that was what I was working on years before was the right. self forgiveness. And then yes. once I got to then I built up to the point to where now I'm actually able to look this person face to face and say those words and mean it. Yes. But still understand that there's a history there and that I'm not willing to open myself back up to be hurt again. So I'm going to back away and move on with my life. But that's I'm closing the doors to that part of my life. The door shut, right. and I'm not, uh, and I'm not going to look back to it, brother. I could preach. Holy cow! Then preach, I, I brother. Love, <laughs> I love the direction that this has gone. It takes me back to um, Henderson, Texas, on the second floor of this Best Western esque hotel when I was trying to sell ads in a uh, community profile magazine and map trying to trying to somehow pull my life together um, after leaving City Hall and calling Bishop Carlton Pearson and telling him uh, that I was just, you know, one more step away from being an atheist. And his reply to me was, just love yourself. Just yep. love yourself. Just love yourself. And I'm going to tell you what, I really think, I mean... I really, really, really think that the more okay you are with yourself, the more okay you are with everybody else. I can get behind that 100%. Yeah. Because there's just so much crap that is only generated in our relationships as a direct response to how out of sync we are with ourselves. You know, I mean, yeah. when you're when you're comfortable enough with yourself, then you're not looking for the same level of approval and acceptance out of other people, you're not pulling on other people for emotional support the same way. You know, there's just a lot of benefit in loving yourself. And so you know, that, that goes back to then, and Todd just, you know, made an excellent point. It's yeah, not easy to that. love yourself. And it's, and it's, 
it, it may be the greatest challenge of all. Do you, you know? think the and, reason? I'm sorry, Jerry. Um, no, no, please go ahead. Do you think the reason that it's not so easy to love yourself is because we're so critical on the person that's looking back at us in the mirror? Absolutely. Because we are so critical when it comes to ourselves. Yes. You know, whether it's body shaming or there's something about our body that we don't like or our hair or lack thereof that <laughs> we, that we don't. <laughs> that's the hard part. That's the, yeah. Well, I, I don't have a hard part. Um, <laughs> shut up, Jerry. So it's, <laughs> is it because we're so critical on ourselves that if we could just let go of that critical aspect of judging ourselves, let go of the judging of oneself, that maybe we can find that self love. Right. And I'm asking this question so that maybe other people who are listening that may be like Todd that said it's not easy to love yourself. Right. Right. Do you do you think that once you can quit beating being so critical? of yourself that it makes it easier to find that self-love. Right. Right. Um, yes. And, and, and before, before I go any further than in that, let me, let me address what Todd has just said. He says, I think that people who say love yourself before you can love someone else seems to already have the approval and love of other people. And, and I think that that is probably true um, to an extent, um, it is, it, it definitely gives you one less, um, challenge to have to overcome all at the same time. But there are countless testimonies, and I think I am one, of people who have received a huge amount of love and support, but still did not love themselves. And, and I'm definitely one of those people. You know, I, I, I'm still the type of person who struggles to love and appreciate myself when I know that at any moment I could go on Facebook and I could say, you know, I need me a pick, uh, you know, I need a pick me up today. And, and starting obviously, you know, with Bobby C and Miss Ashley, but then probably another several hundred people would very quickly reach out and try to make me smile and make me feel better and, you know, say something positive about me. But that doesn't necessarily change what's going on inside of me, you know, right. going on internally. Because you can filter all of that out in such a way as to make it, to, to nullify it, mm -hmm. you know. You can, you can just say, well, that don't really mean much. You know, they don't really know me. They don't really, you know, they don't, they don't really know the real me. You know, if they knew the real me, then they wouldn't claim to love me and, you know, approve of me the way that they do. Right. That's one of the major challenges that, that um, you know, activists like, like you and I have, particularly in the secular movement, is we're always a little on edge thinking that in any moment we may show a part of ourselves that we've not shown so far and completely lose all of our friends and, you know, quote unquote followers and, and all of those things, you know? And so, so, so back to Todd's question, it definitely can give you less to have to overcome, but I'm, I'm not sure that that's the answer, you know? And, right. and I think that I just know people in my life that have found ways to love themselves, even though the rest of the world didn't love them. You know, so, yeah. so, so it's, I, I think, you know, once again, it's complicated and, and can go, can go either way, but going back to the being critical of yourself, I have to think that once again, there's a biological, um, impetus for, for being critical, you know, how well do you survive in, you know, in the wild if, if you don't beat yourself up for making mistakes, <laughs> you know, right. if you're just like, oh, everything's cool and groovy and I'm just going to sit here, you know, under this tree till lightning strikes, you know, um, are, are, you know, is being critical of yourself and of the situation and of what you're producing. Does that play a certain amount of a role towards, you know, survival and mm -hmm. progress and doing better? And I think in some cases it probably can. Um, but 
it's definitely, I think it's definitely the place to start. And, and I think probably forgiveness, you know, yeah, is, is the, is the way that starts. Randy said in the chat room, doesn't Christianity push that we are awful sinners and should be critical of ourselves? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, nobody can sell anything by starting off by saying you're, you're totally awesome and you don't need this. <laughs> right. You know, you're complete the way you are and you don't need this, but would you buy it from me anyway? Yeah, they, know? they they tell you you're sick and then sell you to, and then sell you to cure. That's exactly right. And so that's, you know, that 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 that's part of any institution. That's 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 anything we we beat religion and churches and doctrine to hell and back over that but that's everything you know that's that's literally everything in the world functions that same way um and and the things that don't function that way don't don't survive very long right you know? um so but 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 i think the critical part is is definitely um is definitely the biggest challenge and literally every thing in our world and in our culture plays on that. Sure it does. From the moment you get up in the morning, you yeah. know, you're comparing, you're forced, you're made to compare yourself with, with other people, with other situations. And, um, and everything is a test and everything is a standard. Everything is a scale. You know, it's really, really, really tricky. It indeed it is. Yeah. Hmm. So, so many people having to leave us early. Bye, y'all. Love y'all so much. <laughs> yeah. Good. Good night, everyone that is leaving us in the chat room. We definitely understand having to get up early for work. Yeah, definitely. So we do, but we want to tell you thank you very much for being here with us. Um, RJ, go take care of that cider, and <laughs> <laughs> and uh. thank you so much, the guys that are in the chat room that do have to leave us early. Thank you for being here. We love you. And we really do appreciate you. So, so yeah, so so it's it's I, I as always my motivation is, you know, let's let's do the right thing the best we can, um, but let's do it for the right reasons. You know, let's let's try to make sure that we're still not being influenced by religion in some way. Just because we no longer believe in the supernatural doesn't mean that superstition isn't still playing a role in our behavior and in our, the choices that we make. Yeah, and I think it always will to to some extent. Sure. It 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 always it always will. Even even if we're comparing what we do this week to what we did last week. Right. Right. Like. For me right now, especially at work, because I've started a a new job. I'm still with the same company, but I have a different job now. And even now, from working last night to comparing to what I did the night before, I'm still comparing. And mm -hmm. I think my aspect of comparing is trying to make sure that I improve, right? Or that I don't make the same mistake again that I made last night. You know, so... I think I don't think there's anything wrong with comparing when you're doing it to improve yourself. Sure. But when you're comparing yourself to someone else and trying to hold yourself to a certain standard that someone else is holding, that is when it becomes very dangerous. Absolutely. And does it and so it, I guess yeah. it comes back to motivation. It does. I, I think it does. I, I think it comes back to motivation. And, and I think it comes back to finding a balance and trying to live within that balance. And the issue is always going to be whether or not we have a willingness to pay the price for being different. Um, it's very easy to fall into the lifestyle of, of comparing ourselves to everyone else, uh, letting other people force us to compare ourselves to everyone else. Because when you don't do that, um, that is so um, intrinsic to the game of life as our culture knows it, it immediately makes you an outsider. Oh, yeah. And, and, and outsiders don't get to climb the ladder. 
you know, outsiders are not allowed on the ladder in, in you know, in, in normal ways. Right. Now there's, there's times obviously that outsiders are the leaders and they make new ladders you know? oh, yeah. <laughs> and they do something totally, you know, totally, uh, off the wall and, and, and start a brand new genre of life and, and everything else. But by and large, unless, unless you're really, really motivated to be that trailblazer, it is very tempting and, and takes a huge amount of courage to, to not play the damn game. It is hard. You know, I mean, it, it's very hard. I mean, yeah. and, and, and you and I, even on something as simple as this show, we can find ourselves struggling with those kind of things. Sure. You know, because you and I, what we're doing with this show in, in so many ways, we're doing simply to please ourselves and to please people that we think are very much like ourselves, mm-hmm. you know, the very much the hope after faith family. Well, we could come at this from a completely different direction and say, Oh no, 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 we're going to follow, we're going to follow the, the model and, you know, for, to be able to get the listens and to get the sponsorship and to, you know, and play the game. And that's not criticizing anyone who's chosen to go that route. Um, but we haven't chosen to do that. And, and you have to be willing to pay the price for those choices. Yeah. We're not, we're not ever going to be willing to do that. Um, the, right. I love being the type of person that goes against a stream. Sure. You know, when everybody else is going one direction, I'm the one going in the opposite direction. Right. You know, I would much rather have a show like this that we dive deep into topics and hopefully, um, if I can use your word, become a self-help type show sure. you know, for people who are coming out of their faith, who are graduating from religion and wondering, what now? What do I do now? Right. right. We are wanting this show to be the bridge. Absolutely. If you will. Right. Yeah. So. I would rather sacrifice listenership. I'd rather sacrifice sponsorship and sacrifice these things that a normal, you know, formatted show and scripted show and all this would get just knowing that maybe someone will stumble across our show here and we help them on their journey. That's what this is about. That's what, that's why we bear ourselves here. And we open ourselves up to our listenership to give you guys a look behind our curtain, if you will. Sure. With the hopes that maybe someone else is dealing with the same type of issues we're dealing with and they can listen to it. And if nothing else, they know that they're okay and that they're not crazy. Absolutely. That that's, that's exactly right. And I love that you brought it to that point. Know that they're not crazy. Uh, as I've talked about before, as a as a, a minister working, you know, his or her way towards being an ex minister, one of the concerns that you naturally can have is, am I just self sabotaging, you know, the life that I've worked for? Is there something wrong with me? Am I crazy? You know, is the is 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 there something truly wrong with me that's making me think these thoughts and push life and situations in this direction because, you know, it's obvious from, from other people's experiences and, and what you can perceive that this isn't going to turn out real well, you know, if you continue to go this way. So what would be wrong with me? Why am I doing that? Um, and so being able to be a voice, I mean, that's what the clergy project was for me. It was a voice that was saying, you're not crazy. You know, you're, you're not crazy. This is normal. This is life. This is the process. If anything, you are to be uh, congratulated on your bravery and on your introspection and on, you know, your, your internal fortitude. And I hope that's what we're doing with this show as well, yeah. letting people know that they're not crazy. If anything, they need to be congratulated. We just, as we walk through life, we want to point out things along the side of the road and say, hey, you know, have you ever thought about this? You ever paid attention to that? Isn't that a cool thing? Right. You know, oh, yeah. <laughs> don't, be, don't be distracted by that because we were, you know. Exactly. Um, if, I, if I had this whole thing to do over again and was, would not have been in the survival mode that I was in, it would have been an opportunity 
for me to have gotten naked in front of the whole world. Right. And, and never again feel like that there was this unobtainable standard that I have to live up to. You know, but instead, I was in survival mode, and I was trying to find my place, and people seemed to be liking me over one part of my personality, one part of my experience more than over another. And, and so, you know, I fell into that, emphasized that, ran with it, and, and, and blew it up. And, and it puts me now in a position to where almost every single time that we go on the air, I have to fight this, this, this temptation of of quite literally acting like I'm better than what I am. I can understand that. Try because because you've you feel like you have to put on a show. Right. You know, because here we are, we're getting ready to go live. It's time to do the quote unquote show. And it's right. so easy to cause I'm with you. Um I have to sit back and no no no. This is what we're gonna do. You know. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. But see, I think that is where your life coaching that, that you do comes in for people. Absolutely. Be because you can you can help them and you can show them, hey, this was a stumbling block for me. This, this is something that I probably could have done differently. you know. And you can point them in a direction, which is what life coaching is about. Helping them transition and make their way through life without making the, so, some pretty major mistakes. Now, sure. John said in the chat room, leaving religion, leaving religion forces you to change your focus from a supreme being to yourself. And many people are uncomfortable focusing on themselves or simply don't know how to be, quote unquote, selfish or be alone with themselves. I can tell you, John, that was the hardest thing for me was learning how to be alone with just me. It's hard when when you're stuck alone and you have to face yourself. That's hard. Yes. And, That's damn and, hard. And and thank you for admitting that on your end, Bobby. And thank you, John, for bringing this up. I struggle with this intensely. Intensely, I struggle with this. When when left alone, and and. And, you know, thanks to technology, we never have to be completely alone. Even when I'm driving for 10 hours from state to state, I can be on the phone. You know, I can be listening to, you know, whatever. I mean, I, I, I can be listening to CNN, you know, as, as I'm driving. But when those opportunities, you know, come up that I am truly alone, it plays on my anxiety incredibly strong mm -hmm. there's there really is something about being alone with yourself that is very very challenging it is because you're forced to look at you right you're forced to do it right yeah, because dis distractions are great because right. you can always take the focus away from you right, right. and i think I was thinking about this. They have all these shows out right now that are drama based shows, you know, that are based on drama. Right. From teen mom to whatever, right. Big brother, all these drama based shows. Right. And Ashley loves them. <laughs> sure. You know, sure. And I wonder if the reason that the shows do as well as they do is because People don't mind watching other people's drama as long as it's not their own. Absolutely. It's easy to watch somebody else fall apart. Mm -hmm. You know. And it feels good. It kind of feels good. Yeah. Which in a, is, which in a is weird, why they do way. as well as they do. Yeah. Yeah. It, it really does kind of feel good in a weird, sick way. It's like watching somebody else fall down. And for some reason, it just, you know, I don't, I don't know exactly what it is. But yeah. Wow. Okay. There's a comment in the chat room from Alan. I saw that. <laughs> it? Great. A related problem is that I spent the bulk of my life being trained how to die, not to live. This life did not matter. Death was the beginning of the good stuff and the thinking, I think, to prepare for, or the thing to prepare for, right? 
Exactly. Right. We were trained how to die. Religion right. never taught us how to live. That's right. That's and, so, and look, that is awesome. That's, that's, that's gold. That, that, that is, is absolutely Thank gold. Thank you, Alan, for sharing that. And and we're trained about so many other parts of life as well. We're trained about what to do at work. You know, we're, we're trained in so many other parts of life, but we're, we're truly not trained on how to live, and particularly in our culture, because now I'm really going to, Kind of, it's going to sound like I'm going off the rails a little bit, but but I promise you, I'm not going off the rails. It's all right. <laughs> because our mythology, particularly Christianity, because it has been taken so literally for so long, it actually lost the the possible positive effects that mythology can have in a culture. If you, if you study the works of Joseph Campbell, comparative religion, comparative mythology, then, then over time you begin to see that mythology in other cultures at other times in, in, in human history became a, a, a guide of life. It was, it was truly teaching people how to live life, just like Alan is saying, how not just to prepare for death, but to live life. And, and the mythology... Um, it manifested itself in, in everyday existence through rituals and through um, life events. And we still have it somewhat, you know, sprinkled throughout our culture, like, you know, marriage, uh, the marriage ceremony, unfortunately, also the funeral ceremony. We, we have it sporadically, but it's been, it's lost its teaching element. And but there were times that that mythology, religion, actually had a very positive effect on guiding people through the different stages of life, preparing them for what the next stage was, giving them thresholds to pass through that created self-esteem and gave them uh, security about their position in the community. These are things that, if religion was still good at accomplishing, and had not been hijacked, particularly in the last couple of decades, hijacked by political forces, then it wouldn't be something to be fought against <laughs> so, um, you know, so furiously. But, but instead, it's something totally different and in many ways not only useless but dangerous. But there have been other times in human history that it was not the case that you, you did learn how to be a young man, how to be an, an, an older person, how to be a leader, and you were learning about life. But that's not part of our existence anymore. Yeah, you don't hardly ever see that anymore. Right. Hmm. That's right. And, that- and, and, it's, and, and I think it's somewhat because the system, um, entropy has the system of society just spinning chaotically into a more um, disheveled um, structure. And, 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 and so the, the tightness of the community that's necessary to take, whether it's a mythology or to take any other type of uh, cohesive belief system or ideology and superimpose it over the structure and fluidity of life, it, 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 those mechanisms just don't exist. Now it's literally about whether or not Tide is better than Gain, you know, uh, Coke better than Pepsi, Ford better than Chevy, Republican better than Democrat. I mean, it's 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 literally a complete uh, consumer uh, service based society, and and that's a very difficult format to put this training uh, system into. And that's also what's causing the most turmoil between people. Yes. You know, what are two things that you don't, that you never talk about with someone at work? Politics and religion. Right. Right. Because you could be good friends with someone and get on a topic of, of politics and you can completely ruin a friendship. Oh, absolutely. Arguing over politics. 
Absolutely. You know, it is it is those things that is, in my opinion, that is continuing to um, broaden the divide, if you will, between right. people. Right. You know, right. They, they say United States, but really and truly, if you look at it, we're really not that united. Right. We're, we're divided. We're divided racially. We're divided um, re, re, by, um, I just lost my thought. Probably by regions. By I'm Getting old, man. <laughs> yeah, no, no, oh, no, no. Well, it's not just politically? you old. You've been working hard. Yeah, well, we're divided politically. We're, yeah. we're, you know, racially, all these different lines that are dividing us and pushing us further and further apart. And Todd right. said, don't you dare talk about money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a subject as well. That's a taboo subject as well. Isn't it? You know, but it yeah. is, but it's, it's these things that are dividing us. We seem to have lost our, our focus, our, our view on what it is that brings us together. Yeah. Yeah. You know, now when you start talking about togetherness and you start talking about community, you start talking about bringing these two groups together, you'll look at like you have three heads. Sure. You know, sure. what is wrong with that guy? He's weird. Yeah. When did yeah, that happen? That, you're right. Yeah, I don't know. You know, I because this is the only life that I've lived, I, I don't know if it was ever any better. I I have to think that it was at least hope that it was at some point or at least at you know little pieces of different points of history but we're definitely at this moment we're definitely subjected to divisiveness because divisiveness sells divisiveness is sexy and and it sells and that's the type of of culture and economy that we live in, that it is a truly sales oriented, you know, uh, existence. And so I, I think it goes right back to being able to love ourselves, which I think forgiving ourselves is key. And then focusing on trying to learn how to live life. I think that's what Hope After Faith, the podcast is about, is about trying to learn together, all of us, um, you know, on how to, on how to live life, actually live life this time. I, I feel a little fortunate because in a very odd way, the cult that I became a part of in Des Moines, Iowa, they had a little bit different of a take than what people like Alan and I were accustomed to hearing. It wasn't just about dying and going to heaven and everything's better there. Their doctrine actually taught that your place in the hierarchy in heaven would be directly related to how successful you were at being a spiritual person in this life. So there was still a caste system in, in heaven as far as they were concerned. And so they actually did focus somewhat on learning trying to learn in their skewed way of how to live life and 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 how to do better now right you know <laughs> um and 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 so i think that planted seeds in my mind of oh i i need to i need to learn how to get you know m my stuff together because at that time we were being taught that the more successful you were in life and by success, it didn't necessarily mean financially successful, but at overcoming your weaknesses and you know becoming more Christ-like, that you would then uh, rule over a larger portion of the new earth. Hmm. And and you know I was ambitious, and I was like, oh, I, you know, I don't I don't want to just be bossing ten people around when I can boss right. you know a thousand around or yeah. whatever, <laughs> exactly. you know. <laughs> exactly. Once again, playing off a comparison, sure. You know, um, I don't know if there's ever a way around that. You know, I mean, is but but it did it did plant some seeds on eh, you know I, I need to figure this living life thing out. Yeah. The the atheist said in the uh, chat room, oftentimes it was a war or some other threat that brought society together. That's why the church tries to make the outside world seem threatening. And he's absolutely right, because look back at 9-11. At, at when 9-11 happened, 
there were American flags flying everywhere, right? Everybody right. of every race, every creed, every everything was brought together by this horrible event. And then look what happened eventually. The, all the flags went away. Everybody started going back to their old to their old selves. And I I think they're right. It it is something cat- catastrophic has to happen in order for us to come together. Yeah, I I I really feel like that outside of um, outside of global a global natural disaster such as global you know warming or climate change right uh, climate change I think would be a much slower process of bringing of bringing people together you know uh, mm-hmm. it might it might do just the opposite in the very beginning as people struggle for resources and things like that. But hopefully on the other side of that, it might would bring people together. And you've got, oh my gosh, you've got fantastic people out there like Reverend Reality, um, Michael Dowd. If, you know, if our listeners don't know Michael Dowd, look him up. For some of you, uh, because he uses religious language, it might make you sick and, you know, you might puke and, and, and hate that I brought his name up and, you know, and, and unfollow <laughs> Hope After Faith. Uh, but for others, it would probably be great to, to see this other way of doing some of the same things that all of us are trying to do. Um, you know, he's got hope that what he's doing, the foundation that he's laying right now of trying to create somewhat of a naturalist uh, mythology that promotes unity and promotes loving the earth and tending to our resources, that that foundation will help people on the other side of the bottleneck, um, you know, um, build, build what it is that we wish we already lived in, (laughs) you know? Um, but I, I've always thought, you know, probably the quickest way that we would come together is is if we really did find um you know life on another planet and and it wasn't that friendly you know yeah <laughs> so uh, i i do think it does take a third you know uh, something an outside entity to force us to unite and 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 then unfortunately it's only temporary yeah and and you said the correct word unfortunately yeah, Alan. Alan says, "Damn, Jerry. Most people are just worrying if they can get in." Speaking about heaven and talking about getting in heaven, he says, "Not planning to boss people around <laughs> when they get there." Hey, there is absolutely no um, end to my ambition. <laughs> there's, there's, there's no end to, <laughs> to to how egotistical and self centered I can be. Hey, if you're gonna be something, be the boss. Hey, if you're going to go to heaven and there's different seats to be in, be in the seat. You That's know? right. That's right. Have people bowing before the throne of Jerry. Exactly. That's right. That's what it's all I, I know. See, I knew exactly what you were working toward. <laughs> I knew it. See? <laughs> right. Even in, even in eternity, I'll be Ed. I understand. Oh, that. would you stop? <laughs> even in eternity, I'm stuck as Ed. I got it. Oh, no, 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 no. So what is the wrap-up for us tonight, Jerry? Well, um, I'll be anxious to hear your wrap-up because, to be honest with you, I think, I think Bobby, you've been more successful with, with getting this subject right and, and striking a balance uh, with it than I've been. Uh, I, I think the wrap-up is not just to love your neighbor as yourself, but to forgive your neighbor as yourself. Forgive yourself first, and and in order to do that, if people are looking, they're like, oh, yeah, you know, the, you make it sound so easy. I really think you should reframe your history uh, in this way. Look back over your life. Look back at the version of yourself that you're not pleased with and and truly do give that version of yourself the benefit of knowing that – you were using flawed software, flawed hardware, and by flawed I simply mean hardware and software that wasn't able to know everything all at the same time. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the bottom line. You know, obviously if you could have known everything all at the same time, then yeah, you may have made better, different and better decisions, but you were doing the best that you could do so the you of today really doesn't have the right to judge the you of yesterday. 
Exactly. And it's like Todd said earlier, sometimes it's hard to love yourself. Sure. It is. Um, if I had to do my wrap up, my wrap up would be this. There's nothing wrong with taking the time to work on you. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. Don't right. worry about what other people think of what, of, about what you're doing. Because ultimately, in the end, it is the eternal work that you do on yourself that is going to ultimately make you a happier person with you. And once you're able to find that internal happiness, that is when you're able to start working on loving who you are as a person. It has to start internally. Don't ever look outside yourself for external happiness because it's fleeting and it's going to fail you. So take the time, do that inner work. I promise you, it'll be so much better for you in, in the long run because look, my grandmother told me that before you can love others, you must love yourself. I understand the sentiment behind that, but at some point in time, you have to get to the point to where you can look at yourself in the mirror and be happy with who you are. And as we said last week, is the person in the mirror happy? I think you brought that up last week, Jerry. Right. And that's what it comes down to. Be yourself. Be happy with who you are. Don't worry about what anybody else thinks of you. What's most important is what you think of you. That's all that matters. The outside stuff doesn't really matter when it comes to your happiness. Cause if you put your happiness there, you're going to wind up being an awfully unhappy person. And you know what? It's okay to give forgiveness and set boundaries and move away. That's okay. Especially if you, if you can look at the history of a person's behavior and say, you know what? I no longer be, I will no longer want to be a part of that, but I'm going to shut the door on this part of my life. Give them that forgiveness and move on and carry on. And mm -hmm. most of all, just be happy. On Mother Show, I say be kind to yourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's what it comes down to. Be kind to you. Yeah. I agree. I, I completely completely agree that it, it really is about being kind to yourself. And 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 Whenever you're asked, what do you want out of life? What do you want to do? You know, what do you want to be? What do you want to have? You know, what do you want to experience? When you struggle with answering those questions, that says a lot oh, yeah. about where your focus has been versus where it probably should be. And, and, and I, would, I would truly try to back up. And it takes practice, and I'm still practicing Trying to <laughs> trying to know myself that well, you know, yeah. um, but but I just second everything you've said. It's it's you deserve, dear listener. You completely and totally deserve that time. You do, and you deserve to be happy. Yeah. Don't let anybody Absolutely. tell you any different. That's right. All right. Well, as we wrap up this week's show, there's a one last message in the uh, chat room. There, add another week of stump the preacher. <laughs> I keep seeing that message <laughs> pop up. <laughs> I, that is something that Jerry and I will will Yeah, we'll definitely we'll talk, talk about. about that. Um yeah. now I can tell you what what ultimately will determine that, Dustin, is the number of calls and voicemails we get. You know, if it gets to the point to, that we get an overwhelming amount and we need to do it twice a month, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure we can do that, but it is the listeners that are going to determine that with the number of calls and stuff we get. Um, guys, keep in mind that you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, and Spreaker, of course, right here on Spreaker, live every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at 7 p.m. Central. Um, come and join us in the chat room. The chat room went really well tonight. Thank you to everyone who has contributed to the show. We relied on the chat room a lot tonight, so it's great to be able to, um, have you guys be a part of the conversation. You, you'll never know how much Jerry and I truly, truly appreciate the fact 
that you are there. Um, speaking of Spreaker, if you are enjoying the show, please consider going over to Spreaker.com and follow the show. Just go up to Hope After Faith and click follow and you will get an email every time that we go live. Sometimes there will be times when we have to go live on a different night. And you will get an email letting you know that, of course. Also, if you want to enjoy Hope After Faith while on the go, Spreaker has a free app. You can download that app and you can listen to Jerry's wonderful voice while you are (laughs) while you are out and about doing your daily routine. Uh, Bobby, you never answered my question. Um, James, I need you to remind me of that question, sir. All right. Um, while James does that, and I know we have a delay, we had some iTunes ratings, Mr. Jerry. Wonderful. We did. Um, one is the first one is from someone named Demento One O One, titled "Like Friends, Like Family." I really appreciate Jerry Dewitt's mind blowing wisdom. And, wow. Yeah, and Bobby C's brilliant production. Of Hope yes. After Faith. Very professional, very entertaining, very inspirational, and very educational. Their friendly conversations draw me in like I'm amongst friends and family. We like to hear that. Going to <clears throat> order the book, going to order the book, Hope After Faith, to better enjoy the pages between the pages. Cool. Yeah, so thank you for that, Demento One and One. I know you will definitely enjoy that book. And trust me, it's even better to listen to Jerry read it to you. So go over to atheistaudiobooks.com. It'll redirect you to Audible, and you can listen to Jerry's sweet, sultry voice read that <laughs> book to you. <laughs> sweet and sultry. That, sweet, that'd be nice. If that was voice. the case, I would just make a living just doing little audio tracks. Jerry be like, well, you know, me and Kelly, we lived over here. And uh, trust me, guys, it's a good listen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> also, we had a, another iTunes rating from someone named the daily Clark titled one of my favorite podcast. Hope after faith has easily become one of my favorite podcast. I found out about the podcast after Jerry DeWitt discussed it with David Smalley on Dogma Debate. See, I knew that 10-minute worked. It did, didn't it? It it did. You talk talk bad about me, then we got listeners. That's cool. Uh, (laughs) I see. Hey, whatever works, man. Whatever works. Oh, God. I'm never going to pay for all of this. (laughs) Whatever works. Look, you know, I don't mind being ran over by a bus when we benefit from it. Um, Since Uh, then... (laughs) Since then, I have kept up with the new episodes as well as going back through the back catalog. Jerry's amazing voice and personality shines on every episode. And Bobby C. is such an excellent host. The two complement each other extremely well. As someone who did not grow up religious, Jerry and Bobby's perspective is so invaluable because it helps me understand what it's like to believe and then Leave it behind. I appreciate their candor and their humility so much. I honestly believe that episode three, Father Knows How to Hurt Me Best, deserves some sort of award for broadcasting. Wow. Yeah. Every episode makes me feel like I'm in the room and on the coolest that is hope after faith, out of coolness that is hope after faith. I can't think of too many other podcasts that do that. Keep up the great work. Peace and love, Justin Clark. Thank you, Justin. How awesome. Yeah. And and I agree. We deserve an award because we're, we're badass. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it's coming. It, it's in the mail. <laughs> it's in the mail. Yeah, about like my high-speed router has been in the mail for a week. <laughs> That's, that's a that's a shout out to you, Comcast. Yeah, don't even get me started. I'll start cussing on this family on this family friendly radio show. <laughs> but thank you to every to to everyone that has gone over to iTunes, leaving us a five star rating and the wonderful comments that you have. I can tell you it 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 touches our heart to know that you guys are enjoying the show, that you are enjoying the fact that Jerry and I are willing to bear ourselves before you and allow you to get an inside look into our past lives and even the lives that we're living right now. Um, thank you very much for that. If you want to join 
Demento 101 and The Daily Clark and leaving us a five-star rating. Go to iTunes, leave us a comment. I promise you it will get read on the air. And do me a favor. If you are a listener that is listening outside the U.S., if you leave us a rating on iTunes in your country, please let us know. Send us an email, get on Facebook, send us an instant message or something to let me know so I can go over to that particular country in iTunes and pull that rating up. That way we can, of course, give you the attention that you deserve that you've given us. So please do that for us and make things a little easier for me over here. Um, Jerry, let them know where they can find your book. Let them know about that wonderful life coaching that you've got going on and all the other good stuff. So as always, uh, if you want a copy of the book, a hard copy, then you can go online to any of your favorite book retailers. If you want an audio version, I would suggest you first try atheistaudiobooks.com. I highly recommend the audio version just because I had so much fun reading it to everyone. And then if you want to know more about what we have going on on a daily basis, then you can simply go to jerrydewitt.net. It will take you to Team DeWitt's Patreon account. You'll see that every day possible, we try to put something out that would be entertaining or inspirational for you. And um, in the process of that, you'll get a little bit of a taste of the subjects we deal with in life coaching And if you would be interested in becoming a client, then you can just reach out to me uh, through J underscore DeWitt at Hotmail.com. Yes, I'm that old. I still have a Hotmail account. I didn't even think Hotmail was still around anymore. Yeah, it's funny. Whenever you you Google Hotmail, it takes you to Outlook. Yeah, it's on on page 38 of... (laughs) Two million <laughs> is where you find Hotmail. Yeah, exactly. I think, but you know what? I think Hotmail was the first email I had way, way back, like early, early, early two thousands, late nineties. Yeah, I had yeah. it. I had it way back there as well, and I've just kept it this whole time. And uh, and if for some reason, if you've reached out to me, I just noticed because I've been traveling, I have over two hundred unread messages, and wow. so. Um, if you, if you've reached out to me and that hasn't worked, then please reach out through Facebook. That may be even faster. (laughs) Todd says, Jerry may have a hot mail, but he doesn't seem to check it. (laughs) Oh, see, (laughs) and that was before I admitted it. (laughs) That's pretty good. Uh, Apparently there's one sitting there from Todd. (laughs) Oh, that's bad. I'm sorry, Todd. I suck. That's the whole point of this show is for me every Thursday just to remind everybody that I suck. Look, you have 200 unread emails. I don't get 200 emails in six months. No, See, that you're is far not w- true. Tell you, man, you're the popular one here, I'm telling you. That can't be true. <laughs> Cannot be true. <laughs> should, James, should I share the cell phone number? No. <laughs> Let's not do that. Let's not do that. Um but guys, please consider going over and getting that 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 life coaching from from Jerry. Um, I can tell you that he has helped me out on so many different occasions just throughout my life. You know, in the time that Jerry and I have known each other and have grown to um, be brothers and 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 love each other, um, he has helped me out on many many occasions. So please, if you if you just need someone to help you with your journey. Jerry is definitely the guy for it. So please send him that instant message, get in contact with him. And I promise you, you'll never, ever regret it. Um, we do have a website. It is hopeafterfaith.secularmediagroup.com. You can find us on facebook.com slash hopeafterfaithpodcast. Also, guys, we have a closed group. If you want to join our group, um, we have had several people now that have joined our group over, over the week. Um, that is the Hope After Faith listener page. You can go over that page. You can discuss things that you've heard on the air. Jerry and I, we comment in there often. And apparently that's why he has 200 unread emails because he's on the listener page. <laughs> Somewhere else. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, exactly. Twitter.com slash hope after faith. And you can always send us an email. Um, we're glad to hear from you at hope after faith podcast at gmail.com. Keep in mind that we still do stump the preacher. We've gotten two new voicemails since we did our installment last week. Um, 
Our number is 6307-D-E-W-I-T-T. That's 6307-D-W-I-T. Call that number. Leave us a voicemail with, with your three items. And let's see if you have what it takes to stump the preacher and get one of those nice I Stump the Preacher t-shirts and an autographed copy of Hope After Faith from Mr. Jerry D. Witt. Because I, I know that'll be a great gift. <laughs> All right, Jerry, do you have anything else that we want to add before we bring this week's show to a close? I think I'm good to go, my friend. Everything seems to be rocking along. I want to thank Paul DeWitt for allowing me to sit in his studio and Paul broadcast D. tonight. Uh, being on the road, I'll probably be back in Paul's studio again next Thursday night, but hopefully after that. I will be sitting in my own chair for a little while. Busy times, but it's definitely, definitely worth it. So thank you, Bobby, for all of your hard work. Oh, my pleasure. And also, please give my um, love and thanks to your wonderful son, Mr. Paul D. Surely, surely will. I tried to talk him into being on the show, but he just, you know. He don't love me. I understand. Um, Uh, And... For final, James said in the chat room, Jerry has been a real inspiration in my life. He has been so courteous to my wife and I, giving of his time and attention. So I am so thankful for what he has dedicated his life to. What better way to close the show than that, Jerry? Mm, That's too sweet. Well, as always, our closing song is Last Prayer by Chris Beeland. You can find his music at Beeland, that's B E L A N D, dot bandcamp dot com. We dedicate this song to the memory of Samantha Bannister. Um, hashtag Team Tiny Dancer forever for Secular Media Group and Hope After Faith. Until next week. Be brave, my friends. the length and the time when your heart stops beating oh why won't you come settle down stop wasting your time and your mind going on believing no this won't change Lord knows you know I can't tell where I'm going To heaven or falling in hell are my predictions I only speak what I have heard The sound of your words can do my soul while my soul is here Just bleeding My love, it won't hurt Stop wasting your time Your mind going on Believing Oh, this won't change
away